بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله In the previous video, we learned about some of the attributes of God as described by the Holy Quran. As usual, the link to the previous video as well as the book under study, the philosophy of the teachings of Islam is given in the description below. In this video, we will start to learn about how Islam describes spirituality. But before we do get started, I am pleased to announce that from next week onwards, inshallah, these videos will be made available and will be premiering live on a new YouTube channel by the name of What is True Islam featuring a new web page associated with MuslimsDownUnder.com. So please do make sure to check out and subscribe to this new YouTube channel which I have linked below. Now, let's get started. So far, we've learned about the natural conditions of man and how they transform into moral states. That, in actuality, all moral states coincide with a natural state. Morality is utilizing one's natural condition according to one's intellect, keeping in mind the appropriateness of time and place. Now, spirituality is the condition which is induced internally within us according to the perfection of our physical and moral condition. Similarly, we've learnt about our natural urge of having a connection with something larger than ourselves, more particularly God Almighty himself, and how God Almighty is presented in the Holy Quran. Now, we will take a deeper look at the spiritual conditions of man. His Holiness explains that according to the Holy Quran, the fountainhead of all spiritual conditions is the soul at rest, which carries a person from a moral being to the grade of a godly being. The Holy Quran states in this regard, And thou, O soul at peace, return to thy Lord well pleased with him, and he well pleased with thee, so enter thou among my chosen servants, and enter thou my garden. Spirituality can be manifested in various ways. However, the highest and purest spiritual condition according to the Holy Quran is that one should find comfort, satisfaction, ecstasy and delight in the love of God. This condition is considered the heavenly life or in other words, enlightenment, where one attains true peace and is bestowed with a heavenly life in this very world. Explaining this further, His Holiness states, All the reproof that the reproving self administers to him on his unclean life, and yet fails to rouse fully his longing for virtue, and to generate real disgust against evil desires, and to bestow full power of adherence to virtue, is transformed by this urge which is the beginning of the development of the soul at rest. On arriving at this stage, a person becomes capable of achieving complete prosperity. All the passions of self begin to wither and a strengthening breeze begins to blow upon the soul, so that the person concerned looks upon his previous weaknesses with remorse. At that time, Nature and habits experience a complete transformation and the person is drawn far away from his previous condition. He is washed and cleansed and God inscribes love of virtue upon his heart and casts out from it the impurity of vice with his own hand. The forces of truth all enter the citadel of his heart and righteousness occupies all the battlements of his nature and truth becomes victorious, and falsehood lays down its arms and is put to flight. The hand of God is placed over his heart. The Holy Quran explains that these are the people within whose hearts God has inscribed true faith. 
Their faith is not merely a claim, but through righteous conduct, they become a living embodiment of true faith in God Almighty. They quite literally reflect the attributes of God. They live a truly fulfilled life of peace and balance and develop a true aversion to sin and falsehood and a strong connection with the truth for the sake of Allah alone and not any ulterior egotistical motives. Explaining this further, His Holiness states, All this pertains to the spiritual condition which a person attains at the third stage. No one can acquire true insight unless he arrives at this condition. God's inscribing faith on their hearts with his own hand and helping them with the Holy Spirit means that no one can achieve true purity and righteousness unless he receives heavenly help. At the stage of the reproving self, a person's condition is that he repents time after time and yet falls down and often despairs and considers his condition beyond remedy. He remains in this situation for a period and when the appointed time comes a light during the day, with the descent of that light he undergoes a wonderful change and he perceives the control of a hidden hand and beholds a wonderful world. At that time he realizes that God exists and his eyes are filled with a light which they did not possess before. His Holiness then raises the question that how can we attain this light, this spiritual condition? He states that in this world of cause and effect, everything has a straight path adopting which we can attain our desired objective or desired outcome. Everything has a particular method and procedure and it is important that we also adopt the correct method and procedure in relation to spirituality. His Holiness explains, That method is not that we should seek to meet God only through the exercise of our reason and by following our self-appointed ways. The doors which can only be opened by His powerful hands will not yield to our logic and philosophy. We cannot find the ever-living and self-subsisting God through our own devices. The only straight path for the achievement of this purpose is that we should first devote our lives, together with all our faculties, to the cause of God Almighty, and should then occupy ourselves with supplication for meeting Him, and should thus find God through God Himself. Bringing us to the end of today's dars, in the next video, inshallah, we'll be learning about the most excellent prayer for attaining spirituality, i.e. a living connection with God. As mentioned before, make sure to check out the new YouTube channel by the name of What is True Islam and please do also subscribe to it, which I have linked in the description below. As usual, I've also linked the book under study, The Philosophy of the Teachings of Islam in the description below. Make sure to click the bell icon so you can be notified of future episodes Please do also subscribe, like and share this video so that we can enable as many people as possible to benefit from the treasures left behind by the promised Messiah alayhi salatu wasalam. Until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.